the business of the music business with Erica Von Kleist. Welcome to another episode of the business of the music business with your host, Erica Von Kleist. This episode is about marketing and branding. These two words are thrown around a lot in the music industry, but do we know what they actually mean? You've heard the word branding before in the context of livestock. No. Branding in the music business is a word to describe your identity, achieved by a logo, an image, a vibe, along with very clear messaging defining what it is that you do. For instance, if someone is looking for a saxophonist for a jazz gig, they're going to want to see photos, videos, and a web presence that features said saxophonist in a clear and professional manner. Branding is basically a way to state the obvious. This is my product. Marketing describes the strategies and tools used to present your branded content to the masses in the hopes of selling it. Marketing is zoning in on your target audience and the places where you can sell your product or get exposure, like social media, advertising, magazines, word of mouth, etc. A good example of this in, say, the music education world is conferences. There's always this giant convention hall for vendors, publishers, and schools to have booths that feature their products like reads, method books, or university music programs. They know that their target audience will be perusing the aisles and they'll have their materials there ready for those folks to check out. We often have trouble with the idea of selling ourselves. Music is not just what we do, but it's who we are, and it's hard to think of ourselves as a product. While it's important to have your heart and soul in everything you do as an artist, in order to successfully market and brand your product, you have to think objectively about what it is that you do. This separation can be uncomfortable and a little scary, but it's a necessity when establishing clarity about what you're selling. I used to run a music booking agency for private events, and I was always getting approached by musicians who wanted work. While I wanted to help book everyone gigs, Many of these artists came to me without high quality promo materials. No photos, no videos, nothing that I could show the clients. The deal is, no matter how talented you are, you can't sell anything with unclear, lackluster content. Here's a scenario. Maureen is a cupcake baker. Through years of trial and error, she's developed the most sophisticated and delicious cupcakes in all the lands. Maureen wants to sell her cupcakes to the masses, but she has no clue what branding is. Furthermore, she thinks that people should love her cupcakes because they're really good, regardless of how bad her marketing and branding is. Needless to say, she's unsuccessful. Buy my cupcake. Molly is also a cupcake baker. Her cupcakes are crappy. They're dry and kind of chalky. But Molly knows the importance of good branding through a catchy logo and slick packaging. She brings her cupcakes to market, and because they look so good, everyone wants to buy them. They even come back to buy more. Um, whose cupcakes do you think will have a better chance of booking the cupcake gig? Basically, you don't have to be a virtuosic musician to be successful in this industry. I know many incredible artists who don't get the recognition they deserve because they don't understand the importance of branding and marketing. Or maybe it's not their focus because they want to concentrate on their art, which is totally understandable. A successful musician is a mix of both great talent and clear content easily marketable to venues, clubs, students, wedding planners, booking agents, festivals, or wherever the target audience is. Let's have a look at some non-music examples of very cunning marketing and branding. If you live in New York City, you may have seen Mast Brothers chocolate at coffee shops. These hipply designed bars, which usually retail for at least $10, are marketed as artisan bean-to-bar chocolate handcrafted in Brooklyn. However, in 2015, the company was accused of melting down industrial chocolate, rebranding, repackaging it, and remarketing the bars to unsuspecting hipsters that don't mind shelling out 10 bucks a bar for something they're led to believe is authentic and special. Now, I don't want to speculate on how this company operates. However, I do want to point out the geniusness of Mass Brothers marketing and branding. They hit the hipster market in the sweet spot. The name Mass Brothers implies that it's a family-owned small business, 
inferring that they're not a giant company engaging in the unethical side of the chocolate industry. And in addition, their packaging is this thick wallpaper-like wrapper with trendy graphics that speak to the young, semi-affluent crowd. They've since rebranded their products, but whether or not the actual chocolate is all it's cracked up to be, they've been very successful. Here's another one. In 2018, Payless Shoes pulled off the marketing prank of the century. They launched a storefront called Palessi in an affluent LA mall and sold their $20 shoes for $600. People who bought the shoes said they were sophisticated and beautiful. Thankfully, the masterminds then told the customers that it was a prank and then gave their money back. Needless to say, these are great examples of the fact that if something is marketed and branded well, people will buy it. Lastly, here's an example of how marketing and branding has been successful for me. As a booking agent in Montana, I'd always get asked for a wedding band. The problem was, there wasn't one. With the help of some colleagues, I started the Mac Band, a versatile cover group playing hits from every decade. But here's the deal. I wanted to start booking the band right away, and in order to do that, I needed a website, photos, and more importantly, a great promo video. First, I booked a studio and a camera guy. Then, I got 10 local musicians together to rehearse the first 30 seconds of several songs. Then we dressed up all spiffy, decked out the studio, filmed these song excerpts, and then cut it together. After only two months of promoting this video, I booked over $25,000 of work for the band and we hadn't even played an entire song together. That's how important good branded content is. Kids, don't try this at home. I do not advise you filming a promo video based on partial content. However, this is a great example of how important clearly defined quality content is when you're trying to sell yourself. So go get some good promo photos taken, shoot a quality video of you doing your thing and get it up and running online. If you're clear and persistent, you'll be booking gigs in no time. I hope you enjoyed this episode of The Bomb with yours truly, Erica Von Kleist. If you want to leave me a note or ask a question, please visit me at ericavonkleist.com.